Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be working on this Physics 7b Momentum Practice Problem. The problem that we're going to be working today is the uh, Two Brothers and Their Circus Act problem. And the problem basically goes as follows. Uh, please feel free to pause in order to uh, write the problem on your notebook so that you can follow along. But anyways, so we have two brothers, Albert and Sig, and they basically have this circus act where Albert is launched out of a cannon and Sig basically runs um, in front of his path and catches him. Immediately before the catch, Albert is flying north at 15 meters per second and Sig is running 30 degrees to the west of north at 5 meters per second. We're also given the masses for both Albert and Sig and pretty much the most important thing about this problem is that after the catch, they are moving together. The question basically um, is what is the magnitude and direction of their velocity immediately after the catch? So as you can see, I've written all of the necessary information here in my notes. Uh, we have the mass of Albert and the mass of Sig. We have their initial velocities. And I also did this little diagram indicating um, you know, their initial velocity vectors. We have Albert moving north, Sig moving um, 30 degrees west from north, uh, which is when you, whenever you have 30 degrees west of north, you basically start north and then go west. So this is a 30 degrees. Uh, we don't really know anything about their final velocity. In fact, that is exactly the thing that we have to find. And I've also added an empty momentum chart just in case it might be useful to us. It is usually very useful to me to be um, to put all of my thoughts into a momentum chart. Um, so anyway, let's get started. So the first thing that we can do is figure out this, uh, this entire column for the momentum chart because we have the masses for both Albert and Sig and we also have their velocities. The only thing that we basically have to do is take these velocities and change them, change them into vector form. Um, because momentum chart, momentum is a vector, so we do need um, to separate these into x and y components. So for Albert, this is going to be very easy because Albert is going um, straight up north. So for Albert, his velocity in vector form is just basically going to be zero and then positive 15 because he's going north. If I want to get the initial momentum for Albert, then all I have to do is multiply Albert's mass times his initial velocity, and that is going to give us his initial momentum. There we go. And there we go. Um, oh goodness, it's zero and then positive 900 on the y-axis. Um, so now for SIG, we basically need to separate this into x and y component. Um, we have a vector that goes like this, magnitude is 15, and this angle is 30 degrees. So if you use your Sokatoa, you'll see that in order to separate this, we have to use this angle. And our x component is actually going to be um, negative 5 sine of this angle. And the y component is going to be plus 5 cosine of this angle. So if I just multiply the numbers, I'm going to get 5 sine of 30 degrees. That's equal to 2.5 negative 2.5 and 5 cosine of 30 degrees is equal to 4.3 positive. Now please notice that for the x-axis I had to manually add this negative sign over here. That is just because Sig is going uh, west of north which is a little bit to the west and a little bit north. West is the negative x-axis so I need to remember when I'm uh, putting this information in vector form that uh, this negative sign needs to show up otherwise we will be talking about a vector that goes a little bit east and a little bit north and that is not the case sick is actually going west so we do need that negative sign over here and then for the y-axis 
Um, positive is good because uh, six is going north, so that is perfectly fine. So now we need to multiply the six mass times his initial velocity, and that is going to give us six initial momentum. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So he's 95 kilograms times negative 2.5, 3. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply that. I'm just going to put it here. So 95 times 2.5 is equal to negative 237.5 and 95 times 4.3 is equal to 408.5 like this. Uh, so now I'm just going to put this information on my momentum chart. Um, so Albert was 0 and 900. So that is just going to be a vector going up. Sig is negative 237.5 and 408.5. So that is going to be something west of north. Now, in order to get this part of my momentum chart, I basically just have to add this up because, as you know, momentum charts need to add up per column and per row. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this. The x component is very easy to add because it's zero here. So this is just going to be negative 237.5. And the y component is going to be 900 plus 408.5. This is going to be 1308.5. So it's just going to be an arrow going pretty much something like this you know we don't need to make them perfect because we have the exact numbers over here so that's going to give us the scale um so now the next thing that we have to fill in is this part over here so as you know this part is reserved for um external forces and external impulses in this particular case this problem is not mentioning any sort of air friction or friction with the floor or you know any sort of external force that might indicate that something goes in this space so because there are no external forces, um, we're just going to put a zero over here and in vector form that is just zero, zero. Now because we have a zero over here and this row has to add up per the rules of the momentum chart, uh, the total initial momentum of the system is going to be equal to the final momentum of the system. So I'm just going to write that there. Like this. So now, the next thing that we have to figure, this is just so far, just information that the problem is giving you. We had to, you know, convert some vectors at some point, but this is all just the initial information. Now we actually need to use this in order to find our final velocity. So, as I said before, the, the key thing um, for this particular problem is that the problem is saying, that after Sig catches Albert, they stick together, they are moving together. And what this essentially means is that uh, when two objects move together, they have the exact same velocity. Now their momentum doesn't necessarily have to be the same, but the velocity does have to be the same because um, think about two objects moving together. Just think about you going, um, you know, you being inside of a car and the car is moving. I mean, obviously you and the car have to be moving at the exact same speed, uh, velocity, because otherwise, can you imagine the car going 60 miles per hour and you going 30 and you're still going together? That is not really possible. When two objects are moving together, uh, it is a necessity that they have the exact same velocity. Now, are, are you and the car gonna have the same momentum? Well, obviously not, because momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So even if you have the exact same velocity as a car, because you and the car have different masses, your momentum is going to be different. But you will have the same velocity as a car if you're moving, you know, with the car, if you're inside the car. And this is exactly the same for Albert and Sig. So Albert and Sig are moving together, so that means that uh, B final for Albert is going to be B final for Sig, and I'm just going to call that B final for both of them. Another thing to remember when you're solving these problems is that uh, when you have a momentum chart, all of the columns and all of the rows um, can be put into an equation. 
So what I'm gonna do in order to finish this problem is I'm gonna take the equation that corresponds to this column over here and I'm just gonna go ahead and write that down. So if I just copy the equation, this would be P F of Albert, which goes right here, which is this, uh, this block right here, plus P F sick, which goes right here. And then this has to add up going down. So this has to be equal to the final momentum of the system like this. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is now that I've taken this equation, I'm just going to substitute all of the momentums uh, with the definition mass times velocity. So for example, P final for Albert is just Albert's mass, which is uh, 60 times his final velocity. Uh, P final for sig is just six mass, which is uh, 95 times his final velocity. Now, um, at this point in time, I could use final Albert and final sig, but because I've already said that they have to be exactly the same, I just went ahead and just did B final for both of them. And this has to be equal to the total momentum, but I already have the momentum right here. So what I'm going to do is instead of separating this, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the number as it is. So it's 237.5, 1308.5, like this. So now I'm just going to go ahead and factorize B final. Oh, this is plus 60. Like this. So now... I can just solve for B final, so 95 plus 60, 155. So the X component is going to be negative 237.5 divided by 155. And the Y component is going to be 1308.5 divided by 155. So B final in terms of X and Y components is uh, 237.5 divided by 155. That is 1.53 negative. And for the Y component, uh, we have 1308.5 divided by 155, uh, 8.44 meters per second. And this is basically our final answer. We already have an, our X and our Y component. The only thing that we have to do is because instructions on this particular problem were very specific in that they wanted the final answer in this way. Uh, we uh, need to convert this into magnitude and angle. Uh, but at this point, I mean, the answer is right here. So we just need to use our Sokatoa in order to separate our answer. Uh, our answer. So in order to get the, the magnitude of the velocity, aka the speed, we just need to use our Pythagoras theorem. So it's 1.53 squared plus 8.44 squared. So the actual speed is going to be um, 1.53 squared plus 8.44 squared. Take the square root of that. Uh, 8.56. Meters per second, final answer. And now we also need an angle. So for the angle, we just do tangent inverse of uh, y with x. So it's uh, 8.44, 1.53. So the angle is so tangent inverse of uh, 8.44 divided by 1.53. And that is going to be 79.72. And this is going to be, so what we got was basically, um, so this is not from west, north of west, or right here. And let me just explain to you why in just a second. So let's just complete. Um, so at this point, the, the problem is essentially done. This is the final answer. So that is going to be, you know, good game to this problem. Um, however, I think that it would be good to just as a practice exercise to complete this momentum chart. And it would also make it very clear to see why this has to be north of west. 
because at the end of the day your calculator is not actually gonna tell you you know north from west west from north that is something that you just have to be able to visualize um, by yourself but it is actually very easy again if you do a momentum chart they are super super helpful um, whenever you have these problems so let's just go ahead and do that so for the final um, we just need to put numbers on a calculator because we already have the final velocity for uh, Albert and Sick. So the only thing that I'm going to do is multiply uh, 60 times this velocity. So that is um, 60 times 1.53. So that is negative 91.8. And 60 times 8.44. That is 506.4. And now SIG has 95, so it's 95 times 1.53, negative 145.35, and um, 95 times 8.44, that is going to be equal to 801.8. So basically we have an arrow that looks like this and then Albert is just a little bit small which should make sense because the rule of the momentum chart again is that these two have to add up to this one and if they're moving in the same direction you just need arrows in the same direction what would be a tremendous mistake is to just take this arrow and split it in halves and just give half to Sig and half to Albert because they do have different masses so that would not work out at all you actually need to figure out the proportions by multiplying the velocity times the mass. Um, so that basically gives us this. And as you can see, um, well, the final velocity, so this is the angle that we figure out. So this is the angle that is um, 79.2. And as you can see, uh, this is north from west because you started on the west and then you went north. Um, so that is how we figure it out just by looking at the vector. And now just as an exercise, let's just complete this. So as you know, this plus this has to be equal to this. So in order to complete this, what I'm gonna do is uh, do delta P is final minus initial. So uh, we have negative 91.8 minus, oh, minus zero. So that is negative 91.8 and then 506.4 minus 900 that is equal to negative 393.6 so we basically have something like um, this that goes like this negative and negative yes um, and now we can do the exact same procedure to put it over here um, let's just do it this way so negative 145.35 um, minus minus is equal to plus so 237.5 and we get uh, you know 92.15 and then 801.8 minus 48.5 is equal to 393.5 Point three. Yeah, so this is exactly what I was expecting. So at this point, what I did was basically repeat the exact same procedure, use my calculator and do final minus initial, final minus initial, and this gave me these numbers. However, because this was the last part um, of the momentum chart, I could have just as well used this row over here. And because this, um, this vector plus this had to cancel out, the answer needed to be something that exactly cancels out, you know, this quantity now of course because i've been cutting decimals i'm giving you access to the calculator because i've been cutting decimals all along it is not literally exactly the same number but 91.8 92.1 uh 393.6 393.3 for all intents and purposes is exactly the same so this basically confirms that this momentum chart was well done everything does add up uh no matter how you look at it or no matter how you filled it in so at this point the momentum chart is done, the problem is done. Uh, please make sure to hit the like button if you like these videos. Uh, this is the only way really that we have to, you know, gauge if people are really enjoying this or if they're getting anything out of it. Uh, so please make sure to like that and subscribe. We're going to be putting material almost every day for a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.